Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> <laughs>
all that and I was able to forgive. Yeah. So the first thing I did was to tell somebody because I'm not good with keeping such things to myself. So I cried on the phone. And first of all, I think I told my sister and I told a um, good friend of mine, shout out, uh, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> shout, I told a good friend of mine and then we spoke and I guess I was alright. And then gradually, gradually, I started to grow spiritually and I realized that, nah, I can't keep this much anger in my heart and not towards people. So I had to, like, gradually just forgive and accommodate and intentionally be nice to them and stuff and stuff like that. If you can um, stay away from such complaints, then you should. But if it's somebody that you have to keep seeing every day, then you have to deal with it so you don't end up being bitter. Number seven, how does your faith in God affect your life experience? Well, it does a whole lot in the sense that it helps you to look at things from the perspective um, of someone that has no value in eternal, in, in temporary things. It helps you to remember that my value is in eternal things only. So when things are happening, I, I may be tempted to be bitter, be upset, or be angry, but then I have to keep reminding myself that, okay, this is, I am joyful regardless of what happens. It's my nature. I have to remind myself that, okay, this thing always last forever. I have to remind myself that I have supernatural assistance, so I can actually pray about it and turn the situation around. And if it refuses to turn, refuses, <laughs> if it refuses to turn, then oh, I'll be alright. Regardless, I'll be okay. You cannot kill me. Sticks and stones, they say, might break my bones, but I don't know if you mean it. <laughs> but yeah, okay, but your words don't define me or something like that. I don't know if you mean it. I'm sorry. Number eight. Uh, Okay, how do I handle conflict in friendship? It's almost the same as the, the um, number six question. But this one, especially when the friends are Christian friends, so I, lately I used to struggle with knowing whether to tell them or to let it go. So we have to remember that once you let it go, you must not bring it up again. That's the rule. Like if it happens again, you mustn't refer to that other incident. So I try to, I try to. I try to like um, decide and if it's something I know that ah this person if this person goes on doing this thing people outside will notice and tell them if I if I think about it and it's something that bad then fine but if it's something that's only like affects only me then I'll try to work on myself and see how I can fix it and all that but then yeah I'll pray about it or tell a trusted third party that is wise that I know is And I know he's wise. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I'll pray about it and stuff. So much noise. Sorry. Okay, um, number nine. How I became serious with God. This is a funny story. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I've been Christian all my life, but then because my parents were pastors, since I can remember. But then my work with God started when I started to attend this summer camp and I became part of this organization called Young A Pleasure Nation and then they have helped to shape my entire life and destiny. Like it, it didn't just start off okay, but the first time I got there I realized okay there was something beyond the Christian life I had been living. There was supernatural, there was a lot, there was a God consciousness that I wasn't, you know, having. So that, that's when it started from. But then after I left the summer camp in August 2015, my life went back to normal because I didn't know how to sustain it. But then as I continued to grow, I realized that sustaining the fire and all these things that you get from such events is what actually helps you to grow and the responsibility. So a, a huge responsibility was placed on my head to handle the branch of the fellowship in my school. So that was a tough one. But then that helped me to become the person I am today. So the person you see is as a is a, so it's, um, as a result of the fellowship and the, um, the gatherings and the learning and then the everything and that's how I became and I let go of some things that were a burden <laughs> that were holding me down <laughs> and then uh, my my spiritual growth just went off the roof. Now the last one number 10 where do I see myself in five years? Well in five years I'll be 25 so first of all I see myself probably most likely married then, even though that's like not my soul purpose, before you want to come for me, that's not my like soul purpose. But then, yeah, I see myself married, I see myself doing more for God, I see purple being a worldwide brand, we go worldwide, you know. <laughs> then, I see myself in the media, 
back in modeling, doing art. Like I have interest in little, little, like different, different, different things. So I see myself working on those areas of my life and whatnot. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you guys. If you want another Q and A session, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and drop your questions below or send me DMs and stuff and I will do another video just like it and if you haven't subscribed please do and if you have turn on your notifications so you can get um you know notified when I release a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Papa really appreciates you. Keep living and loving like Jesus. Okay. <laughs> it's still recording <laughs> Fail. How do they do that thing now that they cover the? Let me try again. Okay, keep living and love me like this. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, and I forgot to mention. If you like my shirt, it was made by my cousin. I'm going to put his IG link. D O T Africa. This is actually for my brother, but he makes lovely shirts like this. Nice African prints. And this thick, I know this is not a paid ad, right? But then he's my cousin and I love him. So, yeah, check out his IG page. I'm going to link it below. Bye.